Done. Done. They're conservatives, every one of them. Every one of them. It's just that easy. It's really just that simple. If you can't sell freedom, your stuff, and don't be a jerk, you're probably in the wrong line of work, honestly. How hard is it to sell these things to people? It's not hard at all. So last year, I will, I'll close by saying this, and we'll take some questions, but last year I was here, and I was talking about what I wanted to do the coming year, which was the virtual presidency, which we've done some of, and I've got a lot more to be released. But I want to tell you what I'm working on this year. Uh, starting this year, I'm going to be doing a, a low-budget movie, and uh, I can't use Rebel Alliance because it's owned by Lucasfilm, <laughs> who's one of the biggest progressives in the whole wide world. That's okay. I had a term I came up with a couple years ago, right after Obama really started to get some, pra some traction, and I thought, what would I call, what do I call this feeling? This this, what do I call this feeling about watching everything stupid happen in front of my eyes? And I came up with a term I liked a lot. I called it the common sense resistance. So I've started something called the common sense resistance. And we're going to start the common sense resistance by doing a little, a little webisode movie. It's going to be a small little feature film, not going to cost a whole lot of money. But it'll be pretty cool. And let me just tell you about this to show you what I'm talking about in terms of thinking outside the box in terms of messaging and marketing. The short form of the common sense resistance is this. It's set about 25 years in the future, right after Red 17. Red 17 was 2017 when all of the debt crisis finally destroyed the world economy. We call it Red 17 because there was a lot of people died and a lot of fires everywhere when the electricity wasn't on anymore and food wasn't delivered anymore. And after that, the governments of the world got together and they basically zeroed out the debt and they had one world currency and the, the people in charge said, my God, our cities are on fire. The problem is the bankers and the corporations and the problem is we have two political parties that are constantly at war with each other since everybody's on fire and everything is so desperate. Why don't we just have one political party which we'll call Omni and their logo is a giant O. And Omni is the American Party. Now, I'm going to be doing a world where American socialism has arrived. And you would think the lazy response is to make American socialism look like Russian socialism. The people's court of this, the minister of propaganda that, the you will obey this. No, American socialism won't look like that. American socialism will look very different. We know what American socialism will look like because it's here. It's, if it's not all the way here, it's coming. And every time Barack Obama is about to do something to violate the Constitution, the first thing he does is stand in front of a group of flags and say, the Constitution is the most precious document we have, and it is absolutely essential to our way of life. Therefore, I am increasing the power of the National Security Agency in order to spy on other Americans, in order to protect our constitutional values. And they bought it. And they bought it. American socialism will not look like Russian socialism. It will be wrapped in the flag, it will be wrapped in the pledge, it will be wrapped in things like the First Amendment, and you'll see ads in the Common Sense Resistance that basically say from the government, you know, our First Amendment freedoms are the most precious freedoms we have. The right to speak freely is the most precious freedom we have. But you don't have the right to hurt somebody, and you don't have the right to say something mean that hurts somebody either. We can all agree as Americans who've come together from all around the world, that you shouldn't have the right to say something hateful towards other people. That's what the First Amendment says. The Second Amendment says that only criminals need guns. That's what they're going to do. And what are they going to do? They're going to go back and read this document? They can't read cursive. They can't see it. They control all of the information. They control everything. They've got the air cover. And so you've got a population now that's been told a series of these lies, and it's basically going to be the story of a young man who works for the government, who's a propaganda guy, he's a messaging guy. And all of a sudden, during the Super Bowl, when one of his commercials for Omnicare is airing, there's a pirate radio message that comes in from underground and it says, we are the common sense resistance. And you people are slaves in a cage that has the door open. You have put yourself into that cage. In the opening animation, there's going to be seen of an American eagle. This American eagle is going to land, and it's going to walk into a cage, and the cage door will be open. And the American eagle is just going to keep pushing a little lever, and little food pellets are going to come out. It could fly away anytime it wants to. American socialism, my friends, will be slavery without the chains and without a gun to your head. We'll vote for it. We'll be told it's in our interest. We'll be told it's security. We're going to be told it's good for you. The health care plan is going to be free, and the housing will be free, and the food will be free. We'll take everything you have, and we'll give you all this stuff in return. All we need is your freedom. 
but they're going to make it look like America. And to counter it, you're going to look like a terrorist. And the entire story of the common sense resistance is this. They asked this guy to infiltrate the common sense resistance to find out who the leader is because he's sympathetic to the message, because he's a messaging guy. And over the course of this movie, which will release as several four or five minute webisodes, he's going to start hearing about things like individual freedom. He's going to hear about things like owning a gun to protect yourself against other people telling you what to do. He's going to start hearing about how this little chip that takes care of all of your transactions, covers your medical bills, takes care of your grocery bills, all that other stuff, this little chip that everybody gets implanted at birth, also monitors your mental state, also releases a few endorphins when the president's on TV so you feel good, does all of these wonderful things. And in the end, he's going to make a decision to sit there without anesthesia and have a guy who used to be a medic during the Iraq War 40 years ago cut his arm open and rip this thing out. And what I say in terms of the dialogue is utterly irrelevant. It's utterly irrelevant from that point. Because what I'm really saying is, this is a story of a person who lives in the world of state security, where his housing is taken care of, his food is taken care of, his health care is taken care of, and he makes a willing decision to undergo a painful procedure and live under the city, eating rats on a spit, because of what? Because of what? Why would anybody do that? Because you're gonna, he's going to find out what it's like to be free. He's going to find out what it's going to be like to be able to be in charge of your own destiny. And every bit of dialogue after that is utterly irrelevant. If I can convince young people that the danger to their future is concentrated power in the hands of the government, that's all I have to do. That's all we have to do. And it's going to be hip, and it's going to be cool. And I don't mean it's going to be like our idea of cool. It's going to be genuinely cool. We're going to hire professionals in Hollywood to make this thing something that people can understand. That's what science fiction is. It shows us the road that we are going down. Where is this road going to take us? It's not going to be pretty. I think it's going to be a big success. Maybe it won't be. I don't know. But it's the best I can do. So I only tell you all of this to say, think differently about what you are trying to do. Because when I do this movie, I'm never going to say Republican. I'm never going to say Democrat. I'm never going to say liberal or conservative. I'm simply going to say, does this work? Is it, does it make sense? Is it common sense? Does it work? Do you have a right to defend yourself? Somebody's trying to kill you. Are you a better person if you lie down and die so that Dianne Feinstein can brag about gun control at a cocktail party in San Francisco? Or does a 90-pound librarian have a right to defend her life? against three guys who weigh 200 pounds. Now you're not talking about 30 round magazines anymore. Now you're not talking about pistol grips. Now you're down to the issues. Do you have a right to defend yourself? Of course you do. I saw uh, footage. You got to start thinking about this. Some of you may have seen this. There's footage of uh, killer whales, and certain of them will, will literally run themselves right up on the beach. They'll get, a, they'll get a seal between the beach and the deep water and they will chase the seal right up onto the beach and wiggle itself right up on the beach and pretty much bite that seal in half. And I saw a video one time of this thing that I'd seen many times before, this giant, enormous, enormous, huge killing creature. This killer whale just comes, poof, literally almost completely beaches itself. And the seal makes this last minute jump and gets out of the way and the, and the killer whale's jaws go, and it misses him. And the killer whale's stuck on the beach for a second and the seal turned around and bit him on the nose. <laughs> I mean it, I saw it. And I thought, does anybody watch this and think the seal doesn't have a right to do that? <laughs> Seriously? Does anybody watch a lion take down a gazelle and say, you can't use the horns on the lion. That's not right. Of course you have these rights. These are the fundamental issues we have to get to. And I would just simply say, if you're trying to influence things, listen, what you do in Ramona Teed is absolutely essential. All the groundwork, all the political organizing, I'm not saying stop that at all, at all. It's absolutely essential. All the initiatives you guys talked about, even the uh, shower thing I'd be willing to give up, I guess. Uh, <laughs> these things happen not because of people like me. They happen because of people like you. I don't do any of this stuff. You're the people that do that. Do not give up on this. Get as many people as you can. But if you want to start talking to people about ideas, if you want to start converting people, don't start from we in the Tea Party believe. Start from do you think other people should tell you what to do, yes or no? 
Do you think you should be able to keep the stuff you work for, yes or no? Do you think you should be a jerk, yes or no? If they say, yes, I want to be left alone, yes, I want to keep my own stuff, no, I don't think I should behave like a jerk, they're Tea Party people. They are. They just don't know it yet. It's our job to tell them. You're the people that do it. It's my favorite venue in the whole wide world. Thanks for having me here, and we'll do a couple questions if you like.